Hi everyone, this is Elena of The Witch's Box and we're here today with another episode of Witch Book Tube. And today we're going to be talking about a book called Lunar Abundance by Ezzy Spencer, PhD. It's a really beautiful book. I've had this book for a while. It's been on my like pile of things to read for I don't know how many months. It just, first of all, it attracted me again because you all know by now that I'm really into um, design. I thought it was really just beautiful and it has this textured, kind of like a satiny feel, which I really appreciate. And it's got a lot of visuals inside, so I'm going to show those to you now before I get into the book. Design has been a topic that has been super up for me on social media this week and this weekend, just really lovely photos. So well photographed, well designed, the symbols at the bottom. This last weekend, I just had a super ambitious reading weekend and I went through six books in one shot and it was amazing in the sense that I just love that I had the opportunity to indulge in that much reading, but it turned up a gem or two as well as just some really distressing flops. So <laughs> I will cover those with you at some point. But before I get into this book, which is the reason for this video, let me read to you really quickly about the author. I don't know if it's Izzy. It's probably Ezzy. Ezzy Spencer trained as a lawyer, worked in government and nonprofit sectors and earned her PhD in women's well-being and justice after violence. While looking into her own self-care, she developed Lunar Abundance, which has reaped results for many women through Ezzy's one-on-one coaching sessions and the support of a flourishing online community. Ezzy lives in Sydney, Australia. This book was published by Running Press. So US $22.99 and in Canada it's $29.99. As always on Amazon, you can get this for less. Let me give you the gist of this book as I understood it. We talk a lot about the moon in various platforms, right? On social media, on our website, we've had a couple of moon boxes. I, we put out with our wonderful astrologer, Kiara Stellar, look her up, she's amazing. We have a full moon and a new moon report that goes out every month. And typically when you read books about working with the moon, the cycle looks like you do a spell or some sort of meditation or work on the new moon then you do something on the full moon, and then you do work on the dark moon, and then you start the cycle again. So it's kind of like either a three-part cycle or a two-part cycle. So the moon will travel typically from new to dark over the course of 28 to 30 days, right? We have a lunar month. And typically the way we do our magical work, as is popular, as is common to talk about, we do the work of the lunar energy over the course of two week chunks, right? So from the new moon to the full moon, you have waxing energy where things are growing, things are manifesting, things are amplifying. And then from the full moon to the dark moon, things are waning and pulling back, retreating, dying off, right? So you've got about 30 days to work with this 30 day cycle. And if you wanna cut that a little shorter, you can focus on just a two week cycle at a time so that you can do your energetic work according to the energies of the moon right? What this book does is provide you with an alternative to that. The way she does it is that she breaks it down into eight cycles. The new moon, the crescent moon, the first quarter moon, the gibbous moon, full moon, disseminating moon, third quarter moon, balsamic moon. So at each of those points, you have eight different points in the entirety of the lunar cycle to do different types of energetic work. And on top of that framework, she also then suggests or conveys that for her intuitively, what she has discerned for herself is that rather than it being too specific and long types of energy where you have from the new to the full, there's this waxing, some people will call it masculine or driven or action driven, external, extroverted or yang energy. And then as the moon starts to disseminate, we think of it as yin energy, feminine energy, retracting energy, introverted energy, rather than having those energies separated on either half of that cycle. She actually explains and shares how she sees it as alternating in a way throughout the entirety of the month. So that if you were to start at the new moon, the new moon would be yang energy extroverted, external, driven, manifesting, but then you kind of go into a resting yin phase, an active yang phase, a resting yin phase, so that by the time you get to the full moon, 
you've had a couple of those back and forth. Does that make sense? I thought it was an interesting idea. I thought it was an interesting alternative to how most of us talk about working with the energies of the moon as they wax and wane. It's not a layering or a, an interpretation of that energetic wave that works for me. I'm really okay with the length and the space of time that each phase of the moon as I work with it takes for me. It almost feels too rushed to me to switch those energetic focuses every couple of days, every few days. That is what it is. That's just my opinion. However, that might not be true for you. But here's the thing. She's incredibly educated. It's very well, well written, very well referenced. You've got a great reference section in the back. There's footnotes for the majority of the book. However, as she walks you through each phase of the moon, she'll talk about the energetic, a little bit of a lesson, a suggested ritual. They all sounded very similar to me. I didn't really feel like there was a lot going on. I was really confused because the book didn't read like it really had a lot of deep information. And because she was presenting something new, I didn't really feel like I was getting any meat as to what she was really trying to convey. I don't even know how to explain it other than I was reading and I'd read and I keep reading. I'm like, wait, did I miss something? And I'd go back and I'd read the chapter over again and I'd feel like I had read it several chapters before. It was sort of repetitive. It was disappointing. <laughs> It was disappointing, which is gonna dovetail into a little bit of a conversation I'm gonna have in a minute. Some people really love this book. Some people had a hard time like I did in terms of like, wait, what, what did I just read? I don't, I felt I needed more. As a concept, as an idea, she talks about working with the moon in this way as a way of creating abundance, particularly through the rituals or the practices that she shares. But I just didn't feel it. I wasn't feeling it. It's an alternative. If you're interested in an alternative to working with the moon, I think that it might be something interesting for you to read. I just didn't feel it and I really wanted to feel it and I didn't. It was dry, it lacked a certain depth that I just didn't feel like I was getting. I would read the reviews on Goodreads to see other people and what they were saying about it. Some people really loved it, like I said, some people had a hard time. And this brought up for me because, again, over the course of the weekend I read so many books. I read two books specifically on working with moon magic and I will talk about those in the next couple of weeks. I'm starting to get a little bored with what is feeling like super, I don't wanna say this and have you think that I'm saying this particularly about this book, but it is, there's just this pattern, this formula of books on witchcraft that I feel I'm coming up against over and over and over again and it's getting boring. It's like, we don't need another book on beginning work with the moon. We just don't, we have way too many. We don't need another book with 50 different rituals. We don't need another book with 50 different spells. We have too many, and I feel like I'm just coming up at one after the other after the other, and something is missing. And I say that now as a, not necessarily as a teaser, it's gonna come off as a teaser, but last night, after all of these books this weekend, I picked up a book last night that literally, as I read the intro, I felt emotional. I felt like I had gotten a, a long, cold, lovely drink of water after being thirsty for so long because it went deep immediately with a languaging that was beautiful and poetic but substantive and I thought, oh my God, this is the book. This is the book I've been needing. These are the types of books that I used to read a lot of back in the day, 20, 30 years ago. And we're just not writing books like this right now. I don't understand why there's this proliferation of summary books on something that we already have 50 books about. So it's a little, it's an interesting question. It's an interesting inquiry. It's a little frustrating. I'm not sure how I want to proceed moving forward with the books that I have in my to be read pile because I don't necessarily want to fully judge them by their cover or by their summary. But I'm seeing that quite a lot of the books that I have, some of them are really popular right now, but feel like they're going to be just nothing but fluff at this point. I also have a question that I'd love to posit to all of you that do beginners in this path need a beginner book? Like if you are a beginner and you wanna learn about being a witch and you wanna learn about energetic and you wanna learn about spirituality, do you need to read a 101 book or can you dive into a deep dive journey that may be challenging to you but will take you there within the context of the book? It's a question, it's a thought. It's what I actually go into with, you know, I'm trying to create content and I'm trying to create a, an ebook and a e-course for all of you 
And I'm always weighing this like, well, if you're a beginner, how is this going to translate? Is it beginner enough, but is it deep enough for those who are not beginner? And there's this balance, right? I don't want to alienate people. And there is a very real reality about being a beginner and not even knowing what like the quote unquote basics are. But I'm not quite sure how to address that within the context of books and reading and content. And in any case, I would give this book a two. A two, not because it's bad, but because it just didn't quite deliver. I wanted it to deliver, like I want all the books to deliver. It's beautifully designed, it's beautifully put together. Look at, I mean, beautiful, right? This is lovely. She's a great writer in terms of her command of the English language, but it was lacking. It was lacking something. So a two, read it if you are wanting a different perspective on how to work with the moon, if you are not satisfied quite satisfied with the way we typically do it, which isn't right or wrong. I think that one of the beautiful awarenesses and messages about this particular book or that I got from this particular book was that the moon cycles and it's a consistent cycle and you can actually take that cycle and experiment with it to see what works best for you. You also don't have to work with the moon to be a witch. You can work with the sun and the seasonal changes. You can work with deities. You can work with ancestors. You have options. It's not like one size fits all, but it's exciting to think about the fact that you have got this consistent monthly journey that the moon takes every single month and work with the different layers that are that exist there. You can just work with the, the waxing and waning energy with the astrological signs over that. You can work with it um, with deities placed over that. Do you hear all the birds? The birds are crazy. They're great, but they're loud. So you can do a lot of different variations on working with the energetic of the moon in your personal spellcraft, your meditations, your personal spiritual growth. That's exciting. It allows you to try, and the moon is gonna keep going month after month after month so you can experiment and see what works for you and develop something that's personal for you over time. And this book kind of woke me up to, wow, there are other options out there. There are other ways to play with the energetic of the moon or dance with the energetic of the moon. That's, I think, what I got out of the book that was the most positive. Other than that, it just, it didn't convey her system of working with it in a way that was juicy, that was inviting, and that really felt substantive to me. Here you go. Lunar Abundance, Cultivating Joy, Peace, and Purpose Using the Phases of the Moon by Ezzie Spencer. Check it out maybe like if you have a library or you have, I don't know that it's on Kindle Unlimited. I should have checked that out. I don't know that it's on Kindle Unlimited, but if it is, check it out because it might be something that you might be interested in. But yeah, it's not, it's not juicy. So as always, leave comments below. Let me know what you thought. If you've read the book, what your thoughts are, how you work with the moon specifically. I would love to have a conversation about that. And please subscribe and ring the bell below so that you are notified when there are more videos that come up because I'm going to be actually loading two videos a week for book reviews moving forward because it is in preparation for something that's coming brand new. You're going to start to see it below in the um, description section. We will be launching our witch book subscription box in a couple of months. It is official. It is happening. You're going to hear more about it. And the details of it are super exciting, but I'm going to just trickle it out little by little as we begin to kind of finish up what that's going to be like for all of us. It'll be a lower cost point, but it'll have a lot of good stuff going on. So. There you go. Uh, have a wonderful week and I will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.